Hello, welcome to the session on other neoclassical poets. Other than Alexander Pope, who are the major neoclassical poets? Tell me in the chat box. The first poet I am talking about is Jonathan Swift. Jonathan Swift is a prose satirist, primarily. But he also wrote strong, bold, octosyllabic couplets. He wrote a number of poems. Description of a morning, description of the city shower. You know, when he was in his 30s, he loved a small girl. Eight-year-old girl, Stella Johnson. For her, he wrote birthday poems for Stella. Probably, this Stella was his daughter, we don't know. We are not concerned. Anyway, birthday poems for Stella show a lot of tenderness for womankind. <laughs> this is very surprising because Swift is well known as a misogynist. Well, he also wrote poems like the grand question debated, the bee's confession to the priest and the very famous verses on the death of Dr. Swift. He wrote about himself. Did you know he wrote in a letter to Pope, I think, Gay Gay. He wrote a letter to John Gay where he said, I'm considering writing a pleasant subject <laughs> which is about his own death. He is writing this poem about what his friends will think about him and say about him after his death. <laughs> Jonathan Swift probably wanted to be a great poet. But in his youth, he presented his poems to John Dryden and said, what do you think of my poems? Tell me. John Dryden said, Cousin Swift, you will never be a poet. Okay, fine. He became the greatest prose writer, even greater than John Dryden. Fine. That is Jonathan Swift. Another important poet of the Augustan period, Lady Mary Watley Montague. Lady Mary Watley Montague was Alexander Pope's friend, but after some time they quarreled. Lady Mary Wortley Montague is the author of Town Eclogues. She wrote urban pastorals, urban pastorals. Pastoral is usually rural, but Augustine poets wrote urban pastorals also. She is also remembered for having written some letters. <laughs> the word letters reminds me, she was belletrist. Belletrist means the art of fine writing. She did the art of fine writing and a kind of verse she wrote is called verse de society. That means fa familiar or social poetry. Will you remember? Matthew Pryor also wrote verse de society. The next poet is Dr. Samuel Johnson. Very important writer as all of you know. Born in 1709. That is the year in which Tatler was published. Tatler came, Dr. Johnson came, Nicholas Rose complete edition of Shakespeare came, 1709, big year. And Dr. Johnson was not primarily a poet. He was also a prose writer. He wrote essays in Rambler, Gentleman's Magazine, etc. He wrote Rasselas, Prince of Abyssinia, Dictionary and so on and so forth. But he did write some poems. Very important, two Juvenalian satires, London and the Vanity of Human Wishes. London is modeled on the third satire of Juvenal, published in the year 1738. It is a political poem. Tales, the protagonist, is going to Wales away from London because he is escaping from the corruption of London and in this poem you see Dr. Johnson as very pessimistic Vanity of Human Wishes is a better poem actually 1749 modeled on the 10th satire of Juvenal here it is more philosophical and his pessimism is carried over to human problems in general Dr. Johnson Two major Juvenalian satires. What is Juvenalian satire? Juvenalian satirist is a serious moralist. 
He attacks people for their follies, while Horatian satirist laughs at people for their follies. Guys, do you like these videos? I hope you are remembering to like the video, subscribe if you have not subscribed, tell me in the chat box what you think. I miss the live classes, but I think you, when we have live at 10 p.m., these recorded classes are amazing. Because without wasting time, I'll be able to teach you everything properly. So many points, right? Wonderful. So the next poet in the neoclassical period is Anne Finch. Letter to Daphne was written to her own husband. Love poems. But other works Anne Finch wrote are about her own depression and also social justice. Did you know Anne Finch was very good at writing the Pindari code. Guys, I will ask you questions about these writers. Aware in YouTube shorts and reels, watch them. Revise, read on your own. I am now going to talk to you about Matthew Pryor. Matthew Pryor was a very major poet. Did you know he wrote a reply to Dryden's The Hind and the Panther? Hind means deer. It is a religious poem that he wrote after his conver conversion to Anglicanism. The Anglican Church is hind and it is attacked by the Catholic Church. Matthew Pryor wrote a reply. The country mouse and the city mouse along with Charles Montague he wrote this. Matthew Pryor also wrote Verse This Society and he depicted the complexities of the age of Queen Anne in his poems. And then we have John Gay. John Gay was a friend of our Alexander Pope and Swift. John Gay's most famous work is Beggar's Opera. It is a drama that is a Newgate pastoral means about crime. But he also wrote poetry. John Gay wrote poems that are sometimes called pastoral, sometimes they are mock pastorals, mocking the simple pastoral tone of contemporaries like Ambrose Phillips. Ambrose Phillips was an important poet at this time. He wrote simple pastoral poetry in poems like the cider. C Y D E R, cider means apple juice. Now, Matthew Pryor, sorry, John Gay wrote mock pastoral poetry. Rural sports, the shepherd's week, trivia or the art of walking the streets of London. These are pastoral poems by John Gay. John Gay's Beggar's Opera is an amazing play. Did you know that? play inspired Bertolt Brecht. Beggar's Opera became Brecht's Three Penny Opera. Beggar's Opera is about crime and criminals. Peachum is a man who buys stolen goods from thieves and he is also the police informer, working for both police and thieves. He has a, he has a daughter called Polly. Polly falls in love with Makheath, the highwayman. Peachum is shocked. My daughter in love with a highwayman? He gets Makheath arrested. Makheath did not waste his time in the prison. He fell in love with the prison warden's daughter, Lucy Lockett. Promised her marriage. He was already going to marry Polly, remember? Lucy Lockett lets him go. Makith immediately goes to a brothel. What a man! Polly and... No, Makith is arrested from the brothel. Polly and Lucy start fighting, saying, he is my husband. At that time, four other women come, all of them pregnant, saying, Makith is our husband. Makith says, please hang me. I am ready to die. I can't deal with all these women. Then the narrator beggar comes. Beggar is the narrator. Like a sutradhar. Like the chorus. He comes and says audience, spectators, 
you have all come to watch a good play to entertain yourselves we don't want to ha ma uh, hang makith even though he deserves to be hanged because you are all here waiting for a good resolution let us get makith married to polly wow what a metafictional intervention isn't it with this meta theatrical device makith gets married to polly everybody is dancing huh? it's like a postmodern play that is beggar's opera by john gay It was so successful so successful you know the producer was called rich some rich tom dick or harry rich the saying is that the production of this play made rich gay and gay rich that brings us to the end of this video on neo classical poets some of these videos are very short because there aren't many writers at this time who are very important some of these videos are very long because you need to go deep so read extra enjoy follow the questions answer me in the chat box also have an amazing time studying and building your career bye bye until the next video